Solar energy is basically energy provided by the sun in the form of solar radiation. Electricity is generated di directly from photovoltaic cells. When the sunlight hits the PV cells, it causes a reaction in which the photons of light excite the electrons in the cell, causing the electrons to flow, in turn generating electricity which can then be used for various purposes. Solar radiation that is directed to Australia alone is estimated to be 58 million petajoules, which is about 10,000 times more than Australia's annual energy consumption. However, solar energy consumption only accounts for 0.1% of Australia's energy consumption. Solar energy is a renewable resource, but the quantity of which can be captured is highly dependent on technolo technological improvements. As the world becomes more aware of climate change and its possible effect, governments will be required to undertake projects and provide incentives to support such programs. Organic photovoltaics, or OPVs, are a good alternative to solar panels as they create less carbon emissions to be produced. It offers enormous potential as inexpensive coatings capable of generating electricity directly from sunlight. These polymer blend materials can be printed at high speeds across large areas using roll-to-roll -roll processing techniques, creating the tantalizing vision of coating every roof and other suitable building surface with low-cost photovoltaics. Building upon the recent success in developing efficient molecular organic PVs, organic and hybrid PV cells could possibly exceed 10% energy conversion efficiency, while offering a potentially inexpensive manufacturing paradigm. The International Energy Agency, IEA, in Vienna, Austria, said that for the first time in 40 years, there was a halt reduction in greenhouse gas emissions without economic downturn. The data showed that emissions from the energy sector, which includes power plants that burn coal or natural gas to generate electricity, remained at 32.3 billion tons in 2014, which was about the same level as in 2013. The IEA found that the halt in emissions growth is likely due to changing energy consumptions in China as well as industrialized countries. This was because there was a greater reliance on renewable energy sources in 2014, such as hydropower plants and wind energy. Decoupling basically means to have an economic growth while driving emissions down. Resource decoupling means reducing the rate of use of primary resources per unit of economic activity. Let's take a look at a case study conducted in China regarding how decoupling index is utilized. The early 1990s was a time period when this radically increasing population attempted to reverse their negative impacts towards the environment. The Chinese government pursued a three-pronged strategy to raise energy efficiency and reduce pollution. Energy conservation programs, construction of pollution treatment plants and industrial restructuring was initiated in the hope of reducing dependence on resource-intensive polluting. Since 1992, this can be seen through the industrial wastewater discharge and solid waste discharge. Studies reveal the DI of solid waste falling below negative one multiple times due to improved recycling rates and proper disposal of industrial solid waste. In approximately 20 years, China has achieved decoupling in freshwater consumption and economic growth rates. Total freshwater consumption has varied between 290.1 billion cubic meters and 306.1 billion cubic meters, whilst GDP has nearly doubled. By the end of 2009, GDP energy intensity reduced by 15.6%, while SO2 emissions reduced by 13.14%. These reductions clearly show that the changes China has produced are affecting the environment in a positive aspect. From a renewable energy perspective, one of the biggest advances in biomimicry has been artificial photosynthesis, harnessing nature's most efficient way of generating fuel. So how does it work? Artificial photosynthesis works by taking water, CO2 and sunlight and converting it to glucose and oxygen, where hydrogen or hydrocarbon fuel can be made. Essentially, artificial photosynthesis allows us to fast forward the same process which has been used to generate fuel on the planet for millennia, fossil fuels. The benefits of artificial photosynthesis are that energy can be stored as a fuel, it uses earth abundant materials and the fuel has approximately 10 times the energy density of the best batteries available. 
Heavy industrial activity in Queensland still dependent to the fossil-based energy. Therefore, they are still the largest emitter of carbon dioxide which causes global warming and can lead to climate change. This is the graph that shows Australia energy consumption by fuel type. And this is show the details of the renewable energies. It shows that hydropower and wind turbine are renewable energies that accounts the highest energy output and the most eco-friendly one among the others. Therefore, if we could improve these renewable energy technologies, we might could get a greater outcome. Like what they do in the Caltech, by biomimicry from a flow of fish colony they can build the most efficient wind turbine with vertical axis and arrange it in some certain formation which can make the wind flowing like a water flow in a colony of fish. And this turbine can achieve 10 times greater in outcome factor per square meter and kill less. Since Australia is surrounded by ocean, we can use ocean tidal to improve the hydropower plant by using this kind of rig which is used piston that move alongside the tidal motion to generate power which is much more eco-friendlier than a conventional hydropower plant like building a dam for example. Or we can just mix these two renewable energies by using this machine which could bring much more positive outcome.